reaction in a polar product solvent like methanol, water, um, ethanol, isopropanol, acetic acid, when we use one of those polar product solvents, we see something different. From left to right, that still remains the same. The nuclear felicity is decreasing from left to right. But from top to bottom, nuclear felicity actually increases, which is counterintuitive. Uh, based on what we've already talked about. So there must be something going on with these polar protic solvents. Um, and so we need to look at why why we see this phenomenon, right? So in a polar protic solvent, the vertical trend reverses. So from top to bottom, now we see that the nuclear felicity is increasing, right? So we got to ask this question, why do we see this, this uh, reversal in the vertical trend? for nuclear felicity when we're using a polar protic solvent and the answer is that polar protic solvents solvate the nucleophile so this is a, just a quick and dirty schematic of what this means so the protons on the protic solvent surround that nucleophile and when they do that they make the nucleophile less reactive let's think about why okay so so in order to think about why we got to go a little bit beyond the scope of the class and we got to talk about hard and soft acids and bases. Um, and so a hard nucleophile is a small densely charged nucleophile. So the atom where the charge is is going to be a small atom. It's going to be densely charged. If it's a soft nucleophile, then it's going to be larger. The charge is going to be less dense. And it's going to be a more polarizable atom. So polar protic solvents solvate hard nucleophiles better. Okay, so keep just stay with me and let's keep moving. All right, let's, so let's talk about hard and soft. Hard nucleophile on the left, we have Floyd Mayweather, uh, the, the middleweight champion of the world. And so he would be, I would consider him a hard nucleophile. He's, he's small, he's densely charged, he's very muscular. And so I would compare him to a marble, right? In a, in a hard nucleophile, electrons are closer to the nucleus they're less easily disturbed, less polarizable. On the right hand, we have a sumo wrestler who's much bigger, and I would consider him to be a soft nucleophile. Soft nucleophiles you can think of instead of like a marble, you think of them like a dandelion. You know, the electrons are further away from the nucleus, they're more easily accessible, and they're more polarizable. And so how do we make this make sense in light of what we know about the solvent? We said that um, polar protic solvents solvate hard nucleophiles. So how do we know if the nucleophile is hard or soft? Going from left to right, the nucleophile is becoming harder. And we already said that going from left to right in a polar protic solvent, that the nucleophile, nuclear felicity is decreasing going from left to right. The reason is because as you go from left to right, you're decreasing the atomic radius and you're increasing the hardness, right? Have you, as you go from top to bottom, you're doing the exact opposite. And this is for polar protic solvents. Keep that in mind. You're doing the exact opposite. You're decreasing hardness because as you go from top to bottom, atomic radius is increasing. So you're making your nucleophile, in this case, bigger when you go from top to bottom. So you're decreasing hardness and you're increasing nucleophilicity. So let's look at an example. So methanol is a protic solvent and that proton that's attached to oxygen in, the, in this alcohol we're going to consider that hard, meaning that it's a really small, um, highly charged and densely charged atom. Okay, and so if we put a hard nucleophile in a protic solvent, that solvent is going to surround that nucleophile. So here's the question: Who do you think is will fit better in this what we call a solvent cage, right, where the the, the protons are lined up around that nucleophile? Well, if you guess Floyd Mayweather you guessed right. So Floyd fits better because Floyd is hard. The protons on the solvent are hard and so they love each other. There, that's a, that's a hard, hard interaction and that's the preferred interaction. And if you notice, Floyd can't get out of this cage. And so what does that mean? If he's a hard nucleophile and a protic solvent, he's not going to be as reactive. So he's not going to be able to attack a substrate as readily because he's trapped by the solvent. Right? So small nucleophiles are harder. That's the take home message. And so if you take a hard nucleophile, you put it in a polar protic solvent, it's going to get trapped and it's not going to be as reactive. That's why nucleophilicity decreases 
from left to right because hardness is increasing and that's why it increases from top to bottom in a protic solvent because hardness is decreasing all right so let's take the same example and let's put big boy in here all right again as you go down the column from top to bottom you increase an atomic radius you're making the nucleophile softer and so what happens is as the nucleophile becomes softer the solvent has a harder time keeping it trapped and so it becomes more reactive right so larger nucleophiles are softer and you know the sumo wrestler can't fit inside that solvent cage as well because that's a hard soft interaction in other words it's, it's not as, as strong as a hard hard interaction so larger softer nucleophiles are less solvated and they're more reactive in protic solvents that's why we see the trend that we see uh, going from top to bottom in polar protic solvents because as you go from top to bottom the size of your atom is increasing and as the size is increasing so is the softness as the softness is increasing so is uh, the ability of the solvent to trap that nucleophile is decreasing so here's an example problem arrange the following nucleophiles in order of increasing nucleophilicity so that would be least reactive to most reactive right and on a scale of one to three one being the most and then three being the least so let's look at it and this is in methanol so methanol is a polar, pro, polar protic solvent and then based on the periodic trend we know that nucleophilicity in a polar protic solvent is decreasing from left to right and it's increasing from top to bottom right so let's look at it. so the nitrogen you can see in group um, group five next to carbon is further to the left than oxygen so nitrogen is going to be my best nucleophile and then you see sulfur is under oxygen and you know that nucleophilicity is increasing going from top to bottom so sulfur is going to be the second best and then the worst out of these three and methanol is going to be the methoxide uh, anion let's do another example let's change the solvent from methanol to DMF so we went from polar protic to polar aprotic all right remember the trend DMF is a polar aprotic solvent the periodic trend decreasing from left to right decreasing from top to bottom in the polar uh, aprotic solvent so let's see what happens right nitrogen is still the best because it's further to the left than oxygen and sulfur but now oxygen is more nucleophilic than sulfur because it's above sulfur and nucleophilicity is decreasing going from top to bottom all right and oxygen is to the left of nitrogen so it's not as good of nucleophile as nitrogen in a polar aprotic solvent.